Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Wednesday Q&A on yeah, Tuesday. Yeah, this is our Wednesday Q&A. Our Wednesday Q&A on Tuesday. We're recording this, right? Yeah. yeah. So we're, 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 pu we're pushing this to you tomorrow. Um, we normally do them live, but I will be out of town tomorrow, so we cannot do that live. So for those of you who don't know or tuning in for the first time, we take your questions that you submit to us via email to questions at itmtrading.com. Take them. We put them on a screen right here in front of us. We ask them live so you get a real, true, spontaneous, organic response. And this is Eric, and I'm Lynette. I forgot to mention that. <laughs> That's okay. All right. So, Annie TC asks, how much silver might be needed for bartering just for very basic necessities of survival? And would this apply to anyone regardless of their overall wealth status? So, when I was, you know, we answer this question a lot with, mm -hmm. oh, well, it depends on your strategy and, you know, you got to have, you got to, you know, it's all about your situation and your right. goals and your amount of money and all this kind of thing. But I thought maybe we could answer this from the perspective of like, is there a, like a bare minimum that you would suggest for people like at <sighs> very least? You know, I've never really looked at what a, you know, I, I would say a bare minimum would be as much as you can afford, but it's really based upon your current cost of living. So if you were going to look at a very basic necessities of survival, then you would have to look at what you currently spend your money on and see what you'd be willing to cut out. All those Starbucks coffees would probably be something you could eliminate, but food would probably not be something that you could eliminate. And, you know, I mean, what's a very basic, like, I'm single, but I planned for my two children and their families. So it, it's really, I, I can't really say that the very basic necessities of survival, I mean, what do you need to survive? You need food, you need water. I just met somebody that's been living in a tent, basically, basically camping. Camping for three years with no running water, or no electricity. Um, he's doing fine with that. Are you willing to do fine with that? Because I kind of like having running water and electricity myself. So I would consider that a very basic need. You know, so I, I can't really answer that okay. question because... I, I wanted it, to ask because really people want to know, and you're right, it does, if you're really trying to plan it, right, like how much silver do I need, then you kind of do have to... You gotta you gotta go through the the strategy and answer all all the questions because otherwise it's just like okay well just buy as much as you can afford right exactly if you want to be targeted you gotta then, you gotta be targeted right then then put down what you spend your money on now and look at well what am I willing to not do like for some people they just are so hooked on Starbucks that that would be they would consider that a very basic necessity of survival. I would not, personally, because I drink. I don't drink coffee anyway. I mean, I do occasionally. It's not, but you know, I drink my chicory. So, right. It just kind of, but and it does apply to anyone, regardless of their overall wealth status. But if you are wealthier, then you probably have some things that you might think of as more of a necessity, and if you're if you're not wealthy and you're used to doing things on a shoestring yeah you, you just need to figure it out it, there's right there's, and if you have more to work with you're going to want to be more targeted you're going to want to be more targeted because there's sure. other things you need to protect like you know 401ks and all these other things that you might have that you might want to use your gold and silver to protect right uh, yeah but if, exactly but if you're living paycheck to paycheck you might you might just be thinking well i have 40 dollars every two weeks that i could put into silver and then you would just go buy, you know, forty dollars worth of silver every week. Right. So it just, it just. But we've got a fantastic team here, so you can call us and have a conversation, or you know, schedule a Calendly and have a conversation and see what your basics are, and they can help walk you through how to look at what you're going to need. So. All right. So Anders B asks, could ten to thirty year Treasury bonds be a safe haven during the upcoming recession? Uh, well, you can see me automatically kind of going, um, no, because the problem is debt and a bond is a debt instrument. And the 
debt bubble is already imploding. I mean, you know, I'm not saying that they're not going to go to reflate it again because they will. Uh, but I am saying that everything is falling apart. So no, a 10 to 30 year treasury bond, and especially we are we are a hair's breadth away from inverting the two, the 10 spread, because the five and the 20 and the 30 year spread has already been inverted and, and remained that. We're a hair's breadth away, and maybe it even happened today. I don't know yet, I'll have to look, uh, from inverting on the two to 10, which means that you're going to get paid less if you loan them money for 30 years, then you are if you're going to loan them money for five years or two years. I mean, that's the time value of money. So no, the 10 to 30 year bonds are not safe haven during, uh, this is not a normal recession. This is a currency life cycle reset. And that's what I know and what I've studied more than anybody else that I know of. I'm not saying nobody else has, but I, I don't know of anybody else that has. So no. The pros and cons, okay, well, it's a debt instrument and the money, you could get your whole principal back, but you wouldn't be able to buy anything with it and give me physical gold. That's real money. I can convert it into any other fiat currency as I need it so I can maintain my value and my purchasing power. You can't do that with a treasury bond by design. Yeah, because the interest is always lower than inflation anyways. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, no Anders, mm -mm. no treasuries. Nope. Mm -mm. Well, and so like a point of clarification though, too, cause he said during the upcoming recession, well, there, there could be a recession before we hit a reset, right? Oh, there I don't will want be people a to recession. collapse that in their own mind. Okay. Right? Like, yes. I, okay. So th this is what I see. Um, we're, I'm, I'm pretty sure that GDP is going to be negative. So now we have two negative quarters of GDP, we're in a recession, okay? For many people, they never came out of it in 2008, but we're in a recession. At the same time, you have high inflation. So in reality, we are in stagflation, lower productivity, higher cost of living mm -hmm. for, for most things. And this is happening globally. So this is going to be much bigger. How much pain, how far down will the central banks allow the stock markets to fall or the real estate markets to fall or the bond markets to fall. How far down will they, they allow them to go before they turn on that money printing spigot, drop however high up they got the rates. We're at 175. So maybe we'll get to 250. Maybe we'd even get to three or 350. Okay. Drop them down to zero. Even though in every previous prior to 2008, every single previous recession, they've dropped rates uh, about five to five and three quarters percent to stimulate borrowing and stimulate the economy. They don't have that level. Uh, uh, they don't have that level that they can move now. So they will drop them down. They will most likely print money that makes 2020 look like chump change, just like 2020 made 2008 look like chump change and we're inside of the hyperinflation that is now obvious to everybody because their their confidence is holding on by a thread by a thread so yeah all right so adrian m asks if if and when gold is revalued to its fundamental value north of eleven thousand dollars what effect will this have on other assets well you know Actually, once it's revalued, that means that if you have fiat money assets, which are things like, you know, stocks and bonds and mutual funds and ETFs and annuities and things like that, anything that you can only convert into that fiat money, well, even, even before that revaluation, it's pretty obvious to everybody that there's really no value left in the currency. So, um, you know, what effect will this have on other assets? Well, some of them will go away. Like a lot of, a lot of corporations are going to be tested because we have so many zombie corporations out there. Um, will their earnings, their nominal income might go up, but will their earnings continue to go up? Mm, doesn't look like it, right? So everything has to readjust and that's what will happen to 
frankly, all other fiat money assets particularly were those that have been pushed to highs like real estate, things like that. In, in nominal terms, everything's going to be adjusted downward. It's all going to be adjusted downward. That's, that's what happens in an overnight reset. So that it makes you look like they've gotten things under control, <coughs> but they don't change behavior. So they don't have anything under control. All right. So Jack S. asks, the Fed chairman recently remarked that he is surprised at how little we know about inflation. How embarrassing. Many other experts are surprised at our current state of affairs. None of this engenders confidence. Yep. Do you get the feeling they are deliberately nudging us towards collapse by chipping away at their own credibility? You know, honestly, Jack, I actually love that question and I love how you laid it out because frankly, that is really accurate. And I mean, when you know that you're at the very end and you know that the only thing that is keeping it together is that credibility piece. Um, yeah, just like I, I, I'm not convinced that they're so shocked, right? It so, seems weird that they'd be shocked. Especially when since planned out so much of it. Exactly. So, um, yeah, uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if this was an intentional, deliberate nudging and giving up their credibility because they just gave up their credibility to the markets. They just did it. They just handed it away. And that seemed awfully too easy to me. So, yeah, I would not be surprised, Jack, if it wasn't part of the plan. Yeah, I, it's I mean, never been people part, always, part of the plan before, so it'd be really interesting to. But I'm trying is, to think, like, what would they be setting it? What would they be setting up by, like, the oh, the Fe we don't even know what we're doing at the Federal Reserve. We need to usher in this thing because it's going to help us. You know, that'd be the only reason why they would do something like that, right? Well, Create they're, they're at the a, they're at the very end of it, so. I mean, very often people always made the assumption that they were trying to keep everything just going and kicking the can down the road, down the road, down the road. But they're kicking the can down the road till they have something that they feel can replace it. Do they have that in the CBDCs? I don't know. I mean, certainly we see the test that cryptocurrencies and that whole actual arena is going through right now. So that kind of could in some ways undermine, let's think about this one, that could undermine central bank digital currencies or central bank digital currencies can come out being hailed as the alternative to the private ones that really went through all of this garbage and there was nothing backing them and blah, 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 all, the, all right. this, right? But here we have these and the government, but going back to the credibility piece, Will people forget it? Will people, do people really realize it? Because once they give up their credibility, how do they get it back? It's not an easy thing to do. It's a great question. Unless they use, utilize an external source to bring back confidence. Like, you know, let's say that's CBDCs, right? Oh, well, this CBDC now can help save us. Because it's got a component of gold in it. Or Maybe, I don't, or I don't know, but because I'm that's just what they do. They could bring in this external thing that's going to help, right? But I know that you have an interview in five minutes, so I do. Let's go to so the next question. So Harvard Misfit asks, "Why are gold and silver losing value when inflation is out of control?" So I, I wanted to bring. We've talked about this before, but this is a big question. I think people are asking right now. They really want to know what. Why is this happening? Why is gold going down, right? Right. So I wanted to bring up, I got a chart. Edgar, can you put up the chart from 2008 that I gave you? So this is the spot price of gold, right? This right. Is the Remember, it's a contract Right. Gold. This is the underlying value of gold, so the spot market. So you can see that in March of 2008, mm -hmm. and that March of 2008 was actually, we had reached a high. It was $1,032 an ounce, and that was the highest gold had ever reached at that point and then nominally right and then then continued to fall from there till about november almost november of 
2008 when it got down to $692, and that was like an intraday. Now, before you go on, let's see. When did Lehman implode? September. Right. Okay, so I just wanted to right. keep and that you perspective can see, though, in there. And you can even see that gold during that Lehman period even bounced up, right? It went from... Mm-hmm. About 750, 725, bounced all the way up to about 900 before it came back down. Now, now there was a big sell off there because people needed corporations, margin. banks, they had margin calls. They needed mm-hmm. to get rid of some of their other assets that were performing well in order to make Pay up for the those. losses in other assets. Right. Right. But I wanted to point out, you know, we had gold go, what is that, almost a 30% drop? Now, I'm not saying it's going to. Anything's going to be exactly the same as it was, right? But 30% drop in the value during that period of time before exploding to the upside. Edgar, do you have that <laughs> other graph that shows spot, right, from 2000 to, to um, today, right? Yep. The present. And so you can see that little drop there before. In 2008. Correct, yep. in 2008 before it then went up to make even newer highs, like about 19, 18, 1900. But we've broken out. You can see that cup formation. You can see how it broke out. And there's like a little mini cup at the end because a rising gold price is an indication of a failing currency. And once you really do get that this currency is going away, you think about it much differently. So they have to suppress it. Spot market is an easy and cheap and very visible way. Can I ask you, because you, of course, work with the wholesalers all the time, um, are we seeing premiums? What are we seeing happening with premiums right now? Well, so premiums have been kind of holding, but let's, let's get a look really quick at, like, for example... Because that's the other thing that you have to keep in mind when you're looking at the spot market is that that's a contract price. What's happening in the physical world is really a lot more important because that is a true supply and demand. Exactly. Spot's not. I mean, it's 150 bucks and you control 500 ounces of gold. It's it's pretty ridiculous. So my um, while I'm looking this up, my point was is. You know, during a period where a lot of a lot of asset prices are falling, you're going to see gold, you know, it's been holding pretty firm sure while has. everything else has been falling. But it broke down a little bit today. I think it, we've, we're down like 30 or $40 um, this morning. Um, but <laughs> look, at what the, look at what the stock market is doing. They're getting margin calls. Right. So people are having to sell in. off, yeah. right? What the market is willing to buy. So, so premiums are still very high. Okay. Well, just I'm just looking at Silver Eagles as one example. So the spot price is like a right around 20 mm-hmm. and Silver Eagles are selling for about $33. So that tells you that the premiums are still pretty darn high on the physical. Because of demand. Especially on silver. Not as much on gold, but definitely on silver. Uh, because the demand for silver is really high, especially and supply with prices, is not. prices, prices coming down, people are buying it. So, um, but the main the main thing I wanted to to get across with that 2008 chart was: look, we can have a falling price, um, and still while while things are you know not that great, we I think what when did we go into that recession? It was 2007? I think is when mm-hmm. they declared that there was a recession. So it was going down during that period of time and then skyrocketed up from there. So it's not, buy gold as an insurance policy. <laughs> it is. Right? Buy gold and then as don't, an insurance policy. And then policy. don't look at it every day and right. think, oh my gosh, what's matter. my gold and silver doing? Right. I just keep accumulating, right? I don't really care what happens in the spot market because I know the true <laughs> value of an ounce of gold because it has the broadest base of demand. And when you're going into a crisis, what do you want? You want something that has a minimal level of demand, you know, one buyer, or you want a million buyers? Give me a million buyers, because that really will make a market. So, and we have to... And trying to time the market, right? Like, if you would have bought any time during uh, during the 2008 period, even while it was coming down... It went up to $1,900 I, an ounce in 2012, right after that period. So, 
you know, not that I'm saying buy it as a trade, but I'm I'm just illustrating like it's still a bar. It was still a bargain even while it was falling. It was, and let me tell you also because we didn't show it on this, but at that same <coughs> time where you saw the spot market falling uh, by December two thousand and eight, that's when the collectible gold coins made their current trend high. Yeah, December of 09 was their current of trend high. Yeah, because they people started buying in Thank right you. around December of 08 and then pushed it, pushed, pushed it, it, pushed it, pushed it for a whole year. They kept pushing it up. Exactly. So, you know, the physical market where it really is a, a supply and demand market versus a paper market where they can just create as much supply as they want. I mean, that's and manipulate it. Just don't be fooled. Yep, we're out of time. We are out of time. So thank you so much for joining us. If you have not done so already, get your strategy in place. Just click that Calendly link below and give us a call. And we will set up a time for you to create your own strategy for you. And if you like this, please give us a thumbs up. Make sure that you subscribe, leave a comment, share these videos. It's critical that everybody understands what's happening right now. And until next we meet, please be safe out there. Bye-bye.